getting ready for the green flag in tonight's Seacock 150. He earned his nickname here at this racetrack to become Big Money Matt. He's on the pole, and the green flag is out, and Matt Hirschman leads the field to turn one. Right at the start of the event, it was Hirschman that quickly took advantage of things. But all of a sudden, if you look back just at the bottom of the top five, that's where you're going to see that side-by-side -side racing action. Meanwhile, Austin Beers is reeling back in. There is Anthony Nocella, car number 92, Joe, working his way. And there's kind of an independent runner, the number 25 out of Sunapee, New Hampshire. That is Brian Roby. Now, Roby is a former New Hampshire state champion. Okay, he's working the outside lane, the black number 25. He's got Ron Silk down to the inside of the 16th car. Ron Silk is the championship point leader of the series in what has been a tight battle at the top of the standings among five different race cars. And Silk and this team have really come to life this year with the win to open things up at New Smyrna. They both continue to save their tires and their equipment and come on strong late in the event. Trouble now, Johnson makes contact, car number three. There was contact between the 22 of Kyle Bonsignor. That sent Jake Johnson sideways. He corrected it. The car darted to the right, and we are under our first caution. 13 laps in. It'll be 14 when they get the green. Matt Hirschman leading Eric Austin Beers, I should say, into turn two. Eric, his dad, won here in 2005, but he'll go toe-to-toe -to, -toe to the outside does Austin Beers with Matt Hirschman. Here he is in the outside groove. Hirschman continues to guard the lane. All of a sudden, the number seven car is coming to life for Doug Colby in the Baldwin race car. And Anthony Cecily working his magic. That black and orange numeral number 19 car moves into the top three. Anthony and we've got a side-by-side -side battle there, Joe. And it's doubled up two rows back from there on. Almost like blinking your eyes, it was Colby who went this time to the outside. Once he got to third, he's now setting his sights on second. Running on rails in the upper groove. And Ronnie Silk is following him to the front of the class. Now, Joe, I've watched Ronnie Silk run this racetrack many, many modified shows. And he has always ran strong. And he will tell you, this is among his favorite tracks. See, if you look at timing and scoring, Point three seven six separates first and second, and that could change rather quickly in each and every lap. I'm surprised to see Doug Kobe go this hard this early. And I he's agree. To fade a little bit. And the it's same thing. not his style to do that. And you know that tells me that he's got a race car that he's very very comfortable with. And this is a racetrack that you can get into a really good rhythm because it's basically a circle. You are turning the entire it, time around. It the is. Track. And and. And also, Ronnie Silk is doing the same thing that Doug Colby is doing. So it's almost like they have become the dynamic duo, the Batman and Robin of this event. They come up on Dave Sapienza's machine directly in front of those two cars that are, as we said, they're up front in the competition here. Now, one slip up. Look at Colby. Nice move there, Joe. He went from the high line to the inside line. And here comes Ronnie Silk. Now, if Silk sees the door open on the bottom and he can get a wheel down underneath Doug Kobe, that could be the advantage he's looking for. But, Joe, it doesn't appear that way at all. Now, Kobe is starting to string it out. Leader still remains Matt Hirschman. Yeah, Anthony of the Cecilies, right? Having a great day here today. He's running the top five. Hey, Anthony, you're about ready to go a lap down. Same thing for Austin Beers. Beers running in the sixth spot at the moment, fifth spot rather, Cecily in fourth. And here comes Matt Hirschman, working down to the inside of Austin Beers with the fifth place power lap down, Cecily directly ahead of the 19. Cecily is right there, and here comes Hirschman. Looks to the bottom of the racetrack, almost got pinched. They cling and they clang just a bit coming off that turn. But there's no question about it, Anthony Cecily is not going to give up that spot without a fight, but he drifts up just enough, and guess what? Coming through with him, with Matt Hirschman, is Justin Bonsignor with the 51, and now Austin Beers. 
So Anthony Cecily's strategy by getting up that one lane higher, it just didn't pay off, Joe. And now he goes back around the outside of Austin Beers for a moment. Doug Kobe in the 70 York on the right ear frame. Oh, As trouble now. One car around, it's a three of Jake Johnson, and he will bring out the second caution for the second time today on lap 115. So Johnson goes around off turn number four, and that will bring everybody back around. As they show it right now, timing and scoring uh, shows just three cars on the lead lap. Matt Hirschman, Doug Kobe, and Ronnie Silk. As now we quickly go right back up to speed. Kobe tested the waters, but here comes Silk. Silk, the silver bullet on the inside of Kobe. Off the turn. Will Silk be able to take over that runner-up spot? He's putting a good battle now to the inside. Oh, side of by Doug side. Kobe as they go through turns three and four. Silk getting up on the wheel. You know, you've got to use it now and get rid oh, of all that those tires that you got left. But Kobe around the outside, top, able to hold on to second. Well, you know, we talked about that little bump, and that little bump was all that Silk did not want to see as his car just hit that in the wrong way, and it bounced off. Sparks will fly further back in the field. And some of those cars that came in for the pit stop that made the adjustments, they're trying to work their way back up front. And Anthony Nacella and Austin Beers are still shown in sixth and seventh. And Anthony Cecily has worked his way back up to the fifth position. Here comes Silk again with that number seven that number 16 car. Trouble in oh. turn one. Multiple Anthony cars Nocella. involved. Anthony Nocella goes around in the middle of turns one and two. Several cars had a scatter to the outside lane of the racetrack and a heartbreak for Nocella because he was inside the top 10 and like happened at Riverhead, get down to the final stages of the race and he loses a good solid run. So this is the second time this has happened to Nocella, but it's the third caution of the day. Comes out on lap number 134, and it's for Anthony Nocella and a spin in turn one. Matt Hirschman challenged once again by Doug Kobe. The green flag waves from atop the flag stand. Kobe stays tough on the outside lane, but Hirschman runs a bit wide. Kobe keeps his foot in it, and he can't do it. To the back straightaway, Matt Hirschman holds on to the lead. It's an amazing battle at the point. Side by side for second now. All of a sudden, working his magic, Doug Kobe is back in command in second. Silk is right there in his tire tracks as they come back to the line. Bonsignor is there, and what about Fortin? Car number 34, the blue car, has now surfaced among the top positions here. He is now up to the top five. Big run for J.B. Fortin, but he is one lap down. All the cars ahead of him are a lap ahead, so passing them won't gain him any spots, but he rides in the sixth position at the moment as he tries to track down the uh, 51 of Justin Bonsignor directly ahead as pressure from behind for Kyle Bonsignor. John McKennedy continuing to try to pick up spots as he's now moved up to eighth. Meanwhile, on the back straightaway and up off turn number four, white flag is out. Matt Hirschman, final time around. He won the Mayhew Tools pole. He leads the Mayhew Tools car up to Kobe. Final circuit. Hirschman in a dominating performance has led the entire way wins back-to-back -back races and captures the checkered flag at Seacon. And it'll be Doug Colby who finishes in the runner-up spot. Ronnie Silk holds on for third, unofficially Justin Bonsignor to round out the top four. And Anthony Sella, great run to be among the top five. So there's your top five runners currently as we speak. And then they were all on the lead lap. And then in six, unofficially, J.B. Fortin, one lap down. John McKennedy is seventh. Austin Beers was eighth. Kyle Bonsignor was ninth. Anthony Nacella salvaged a unfortunate situation to finish among the top ten. I believe this was a, a very big unknown for a lot of teams or all the teams because of the, the pavement and the characteristics of the track changed. Uh, I think I'm going to like it, but, uh, you know, this is always, I would say, it's been a good track for me, not a great track, but now winning a, a wheel and tour race here, we've kind of won it all here, you know, between Open Wheel Wednesday, the Haunted 100, and, uh, you know, we've 
we've won them all here at Modified. So I guess uh, I guess it's been pretty good to me. Uh, so just thankful for the whole team. Everybody did an excellent job. Uh, you know, this whole PD Motorsports team, uh, the Bristol Toyota local sponsor here on board for this race, and then all of our sponsors, supporters, and crew members here that uh, work hard and, uh, you know, both at home in the shop and here at the track. So really uh, thankful to have a great team to drive for, a good car underneath me, and uh, who knows, we might just figure this deal out yet. It's always a good thing. I mean, I don't care if you if you win on the Wheeling Tour at your local Saturday night track. If you won, uh, you, you did everything right when you win races. Uh, you don't usually win them when you don't do stuff right. So, uh, you know, I don't care if it's uh, my local home tracks in Pennsylvania or, or the Wheeling Tour. Uh, when we go to the races, if we do everything right and execute, we always uh, seem to have a shot to win. So, uh, really, uh, like I said, just uh, appreciate the good days and two in a row, and we'll, uh, we'll go on the next one and see what we can do. Hi, I'm Parker Kligerman. For more access like this from Pit Road, be sure to click and subscribe to the Motorsports on NBC YouTube channel.